Right, okay, so question 23 now. Uh, and we are looking at the properties of halogens and halide ions. So bromine can be extracted by bubbling chlorine gas through concentrated solutions containing bromide ion. Write the electronic configuration of the bromide ion. So the bromide ion is going to, um, well, the atomic number of bromine is 35. If you look up on the periodic table, because it's bromide, that's Br minus, so it's going to fill up the 4p uh, subshell. So here we go, we're going to go 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 3d10, 4s2, 4p6. It doesn't matter if you've swapped those two over um, because obviously they, they do fill in the opposite order but that just keeps all the main uh, shells together. Write an ionic equation for this reaction and state why it takes place in terms of the reactivity of the uh, halogens. So you're going to start with bromide ions, Br minus, you are adding chlorine gas, Cl2, that gives you chloride ions, Cl minus, Oh no, yeah, um, and bromine there. Okay, and then to balance it up, I need a two there and a two there. Why does it take place? It takes place because chlorine is more reactive than bromine. Remember, reactivity decreases down the group. So chlorine is, a, is far more reactive than bromine. Okay, uh, so I've put the answers on there for B and C. So the first one is we can use chlorine uh, for water treatment. Uh, what's the benefit? Well, it kills bacteria, which is obviously why we do it. Um, but it is a toxic uh, chemical at the end of the day. You won't have too much chlorine. Uh, if I want to do a precipitation reaction to identify chloride, bromide and iodide ions, I would use silver nitrate solution. And what will be the colour of those precipitates? Remember, chloride is white, silver bromide is cream, and silver iodide is yellow. Key mistake is it's the silver precipitate, so silver halide precipitates which give you those colours. So silver chloride is white, silver bromide is green, silver iodide is yellow. Right, so I've now got a nice entropy question to work my way through. Gives me various bits of experimental data um, and I'm reacting uh, lead nitrate with potassium iodide. Note the potassium iodide is in excess, they tell you um, here, um, but they give me the volume and concentration of lead nitrate. Uh, so we need to determine, first of all, the energy produced. How do I know the energy is produced? Well, it's because my temperature has gone up, so it is an exothermic reaction. So first things first, energy, which is in joules, is the mass of water, which is 100, because it was 50 of one solution and 50 of the other solution, times 4.18, which is the specific heat capacity of water, times 10.5, which is your temperature change between 19.5 and 30. That gives you 4389 joules, or 4.389 kilojoules. Right, I'm now gonna work out my moles of uh, lead nitrate because the other one is in excess. So the moles of lead nitrate is going to be uh, concentration times volume over a thousand and that comes to 0 0.075 and then finally to get your answer delta H in kilojoules per mole it's going to be 4.389 divided by 0.075. That comes to 58.52, which is a minus. They asked me to give it to an appropriate number of significant figures. If you notice, they've given me everything here to three significant figures, and therefore your final answer is 58.5 kilojoules per mole. That should be, yeah, mine.
Right, okay, so um, let's go uh, and do another ionic equation. So, oh uh, yeah, ionic equation of the reaction takes place. Um, we have got PB ions. So PB2 plus aqueous. They are reacted to give me the, uh, with iodide ions, and I need two of them, aqueous, to give me PB I2 solid. All the other ions are spectator ions. Uh, right, so the 50 centimetre cubed of potassium iodide contains 10% more than is needed to react with the lead nitrate. Um, calculate the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed of potassium iodide that you use. So, um, if we go back to what we've just worked out, we know that we used in that is 0 0.075 moles. You need two potassium iodides to react with that. So the number of moles is going to be um, 0 0.0 is going to be 2 times 0 0.075 moles. Uh, right, so 2 times 0 0.075 is going to be 0 0.15 moles. But, so that's what I need to react with it, but it tells me I've got 10% more than I actually require. So I need to times this by 1.1. 1 .1. So moles that I've actually got is going to equal 0 0.15 times 1.1, 1 .1, and that equals 0 0.165. And then finally, you work out your concentration which is going to be moles divided by the volume, which is 50 times by 1,000, and that gives you a concentration of 3.3 uh, moles per decimeter cubed.